I'd like to go over an obvious but important theorem. It's called the third angle theorem. Uh, the third angle theorem starts with two triangles, which I have illustrated here, triangles A, B, C, and triangles D, E, F. The third angle theorem says that if we have two triangles and they share two pairs of congruent angles, then uh, the remaining pair of angles must also be congruent. So in this diagram, we see that angles A and C form one pair of congruent angles between the two triangles, and then angles B and E form another pair of congruent angles. And so what this means is that angle C and angle F must also be congruent. Okay, we can see this really clearly if we substitute some values in for our angles. So if we start with um, triangle ABC and we let angle A equal 30 degrees and angle B equal 40 degrees, then we know that because angles A and D are congruent, D must also equal 30 degrees and um, because angle B is 40 degrees, E must also be 40 degrees since angles B and E are also congruent. Uh, using the triangle sum theorem, we know that if we add angle A plus angle B, their measures, plus the measure of angle C, we should get 180 degrees. And for triangle DEF, if we add the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F, we will get 180 degrees as well. We can clean up the left sides of each equation. 30 plus 40 is 70. And um, we get the pretty much the same thing on the right-hand side. Once again, we have 30 plus 40 equals 70, but now we're adding the measure of angle F, and that equals 180 degrees. If we solve for the measure of angle C in the left equation, we get the measure of angle C equals 180 minus 70, which is 110. And on the right equation, you can do the same thing, subtracting 70 from both sides. And we find that the measure of angle F equals 110 degrees as well. Okay. So um, the problem with this type of analysis here is that um, we've just proven that this is the case for a very specific set of circumstances where angle A and D both equal 30 degrees and angles B and E both equal 40 degrees. We want to make this more general so it works with um, triangles of all different kinds of degree measures. And so the way that we're going to do this is um, instead of referring to specific degree measures, we're going to use variables instead. And that's how we're going to approach this proof. So I'm just gonna clear this off. And I want you to go ahead and look at the given and proof statements. This is what we're trying to show. Um, we have two triangles, A, B, C, and D, E, F. And we know that um, angle A in the first triangle is congruent to angle D in the second triangle, and that angle B in the first triangle is congruent to angle E in the second triangle. And we want to show that angle C and F are also congruent. So remember, uh, we always begin our proof with what we have been given. So our first statement is that angle A 
is congruent to angle D and angle B is congruent to angle E. And that is what we were given. Now, when I threw in these example angle measures into our diagrams here, I'm gonna clear them out. I did some addition with them. Remember, we, we wanna do addition with these um, angles in our proof. And remember that anytime we wanna do that, we need to transform any statements of congruence into statements of equality. So the next step here is going to transform our statement one into uh, statements of equality. So I'm going to change what I have in one and I'm going to say the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle D. So I'm changing my statement of congruence into a statement of equality. I'm gonna do the same thing for the second statement of congruence. I'm going to say the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle E. And that's just by definition of congruence. Okay. In the next step, I'm going to write out uh, the angle addition postulate or actually the triangle sum theorem. I'm going to write out the triangle sum theorem as it applies to both triangles. So in step three, I'm going to tackle triangle ABC and I'm going to um, use it in the triangle sum theorem. So we would have the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C must equal 180 degrees. That is by the triangle sum theorem. I can do the same thing for my other triangle, triangle DEF. Likewise, I know that the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F must also equal 180 degrees. And once again, that's by the triangle sum theorem. Now, hopefully you notice that in steps two and three, we have two things that are equal to the same thing. I have measure of angle A plus B plus C that's equal to 180 degrees. And I have the measure of angle E, D plus E plus F that's also equal to 180 degrees. So when we have two things that are equal to the same thing, then we know that they must be equal to each other. So uh, in step five, what I can write is that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is equal to the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F. Once again, looking back at steps three and four, I can call um, this first sum, the measure of angles A, B, and C, I can refer to that with the lowercase a, and I can call 180 degrees B. 180 degrees also appears in step four, so I'm going to call that 100, I'm gonna call the 180 degrees in step four B as well. And then I'm going to call this other sum, the measures of angles D, E, and F added together. I'm gonna to call that C. 
So once again, you're going to see this pattern over and over again in the proofs that we do in geometry this year. Remember, if A equals B and B equals C, then that must mean that A and C are equal to each other. So that should remind you that we have been working with the transitive property. That is what allowed us to, to set our two sums in three and four equal to each other in step five. Okay, so now we need to look at where we're going. Um, let's see. We want to prove that the measure of angle C is congruent to the measure of angle F. I'm gonna change my color here a little bit so you can see it better. We wanna show that the measure of angle C is congruent to the measure of angle F. So I'm gonna look in step five. I have the measure of angle C here on the left, and I have the measure of angle F on the right. But I have some other stuff that I wanna get rid of, okay? I either want to get rid of the measure of angle. Well, I need to get rid of the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B from the left. And I need to get rid of the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E on the right. So that all I'm le left with is the measure of angle C on the left and I have the measure of angle F on the right. So how am I gonna do that? Clear some things up here. Okay, so I want you to look back at step two. Looking back at step two, I am told that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle D and the measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle E. That means that wherever I see the measure of angle A, I can replace it with the measure of angle D. And wherever I see the measure of angle B, I can replace it with the measure of angle E. Let's see how that helps us. I'm gonna apply the step two to what I have in step five. Okay, so I'm going to replace the measure of angle A with the measure of angle D. Okay, so I just replace the measure of angle A with the measure of angle D since I'm told in step two that the, the measures of angles A and D are equal to each other. And then I'm going to replace the measure of angle B with the measure of angle E. So I replaced the measure of angle B with the measure of angle E. And I did that because of step two. And then I'm just gonna continue to write what I have in step five. So what's left is the measure of angle C, and that's equal to the measure of angle D plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle F. Okay, once again, we just wanna be left with the measure of angle C on one side of our equal sign and the measure of angle F on the other side of our equal sign because that is what is shown in our proof statement, okay? So now I have the measure of angle D on the plus the measure of angle E 
on the left-hand side of my equation, and I also have it on the right-hand side of my equation. So I want you to think, how can I get rid of the measures of angles D and E? Might wanna pause the video and think about it for a little bit, okay? Well, what I can do if I subtracted the measure of angle D from both sides of my equation, and I also subtracted the measure of angle E from both sides of my equation, right? Both of these steps are permissible. As long as I do something to one side of the equation I, and I do it to the other side of the equation as well, then I'm fine. Uh, we can see that the measure of angle D is going to cancel out on both sides of the equation, as does the measures of angle E. And so now all I'm left with is uh, the measure of angle C equals the measure of angle F. Okay, it looks like I forgot to put down a reason for step six. Remember in step six, all we did was we substituted We substituted, um, we substituted the measure of angle D for the measure of angle A and the measure of angle E for the measure of angle B. And we did that because of um, the statements of equality that we had in step two. Okay, to go from step six to step seven, we just subtracted the measures of angles D and E from both sides of our equation. So by subtraction, we were left with just the measure of angle C being equal to the measure of angle F. Now, what I want for you to do is I want you to compare what you have in step seven with what we were asked to prove. Do you see a difference in what we're asked to prove and what we actually have in statement seven? You should notice that our proof statement asks us to show that angles C and F are congruent well, in step seven, what we have is that the measures of those angles are equal. So what we have left to do is to change um, the statement in seven into a statement of congruence. So we can transform that by saying that angle C must be congruent to angle F. And that is by the definition of angle congruence. Angles are congruent if they have equal measures. So this is by the definition of congruent. And now we've proven exactly what we've been asked to show. And our proof is done.